Let's take a look at my top 10 ongoing manga of 2021. Stay tuned. Back in 2020, at the very end of the year, I made a couple videos. Um, if you're following this channel already, you may have seen them. If you're not, you may have not. You can go check them out if you want. But one of them was my favorite uh, concluded manga series of all time, and the second one was my favorite ongoing series at that time. And while my concluded manga list really hasn't changed since the end of 2020, my ongoing series definitely has. Um, for one reason or another, you know, certain series may have dropped off the list or moved up or down, but there's a lot of things that I wanted to update about my top 10. And I figured what better time to do that than at the beginning of the new year. So here we are looking at my top 10, uh, my new top 10 ongoing manga list for 2021. Um, but this is a hard list for me to put together. Like, I wanted to make sure that I put together a top 10 list that not only was you know made up of series that I consider to be the top of the top, the, the cream of the crop, if you will, but also a list that like kind of encapsulates and uh, describes my varied tastes in the manga medium. Um, so in order to make this list better, um, I decided to come up with a few rules of how to qualify certain series into appearing on my top 10 list. So there are three different rules. Number one, the first rule is the series has to be still ongoing, not just in English, but also in Japan. Uh, this means that series like Chainsaw Man, uh, Beastars, or Opossums are not going to qualify to be on this list. Chainsaw Man, obviously the digital release in English is done, but the physical is not, so that's why I mentioned that series. Uh, number two, uh, the series has to be available officially like have a licensed release in English. Now, I don't care if it's only available digitally, that you know qualifies as long as it's an official release, though nothing on this list is available digitally only. It's all stuff that is available physically. Uh, just a little spoiler for the list. Um, so this disqualifies series like Kingdom or Hajime no Ippo that do not have official English releases. And the third rule is the series cannot be on hiatus. It has to have at least a semi-regular release schedule, whether it's you know weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, whatever the heck the schedule is, as long as it has chapters coming out at a semi-regular pace, then the series would qualify to be on this list. Um, now, last time I wanted to not do anything that was on hiatus, but I wanted to put Hunter Hunter on the list, so I went ahead and did so. So that means that this time Hunter Hunter does not qualify, you know, other stuff like Vagabond would not qualify either. So those are the three rules. Now, going by those rules did help me to narrow down my list by a little bit. Um, however, even after that, there's 55 ongoing manga that I read currently uh, that would qualify for this list. So it was still a lot to, to go through, but that means that this top 10 is kind of like the, what, like top 18% of my manga that I'm currently reading. So that's, you know, that's cool. You know, quick math, I don't know if that's correct or not, but yeah. So anyway, um, one more note before we get into it. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to be comparing this list to my previous top 10 list. So we can take a look at what series uh, dropped off of my previous list for whatever reason and which ones got higher, which ones got lower. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely stay through to the end. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into it with my number 10, which is Comey Can't Communicate. Now, I love this series and I talk about it all the time on my channel whenever I get new volumes and hauls and stuff. Um, I absolutely love this series. It's it's cute, it's wholesome, it's adorable, it, it's just fantastic and it melted my heart. Like the first volume, when you see that first meeting of Komi and Tadano, just melted my heart and I absolutely love it. Like. Every new volume is fantastic, just a lot of really fun uh, circumstances, and I recommend it to so many people. Like, whether they're fans of Slice of Life or romantic comedy stuff or not, I always recommend Comey because it's just a sweet series. Um, and I'm really happy that, like, since last year, we've seen the anime adaptation come out because even though I usually don't watch anime adaptations of manga that I read or have read, 
uh, I really enjoy seeing them come out, especially when they are received positively, uh, because it brings a lot of new people into the fandom, if you will, into appreciating this series uh, that I've already been reading. I, I love having more people who love the things that I already love. It's, it's a great feeling. So my number nine and eight picks pretty much could be tied, but we're gonna go ahead and call this one number nine, My Hero Academia. Now, if you know me and you know my channel, you might know that I really love superhero comics. I mean, like everything behind me here, th those are all like Marvel, DC, etc. I, I love superheroes. Um, I've been, you know, into superheroes from before I even got into anime and manga and stuff in the, you know, mid to late 90s. Um, and so I'm always kind of hesitant when I see a superhero manga or a superhero anime because usually they don't do, in my opinion, justice. But I went into My Hero because it looked like a lot of fun, and in general, my entire life, I've been a huge fan of shonen manga. Um, and so I, you know, I tried it out back when it was first getting published in the US, and I immediately loved it. Like, I loved the idea behind this series, I loved the characters, I love the creativity behind the powers. It's just this really well-built world that feels lived in, um, that has fantastic and intriguing you know relationships between the characters and the villains though it focuses on like the younger students and stuff and them learning to use their powers positively and how to like harness them if you will i love the relationships that exist between the you know the older heroes the the ones that have been existing a while before the series has begun uh, and kind of the stories that unfold in front of us about the the past of these characters and their connections with others and stuff it's a fantastic series uh, i recommend it to anyone who's like a fan of superhero stuff that has not yet gotten into manga and there are a ton of people that I know personally who, whether it be by my recommendation or not, have gotten into My Hero Academia as fans of superhero stuff, uh, as fans of comics only, and this has been a big gateway drug, if you will, into getting into manga. Um, so I really love the series. I, the only reason why, and there's a spoiler for the rest of this list, the only reason why I put this one on my list but One Punch Man is not on the list is because even though Yusuke Murata's artwork is far beyond anything that Horikoshi has done, no offense to Horikoshi, but I mean Murata is an insane talent, uh, the story in One Punch Man I feel has kind of stagnated uh, in the past year or two. That's why that series also didn't make it on my previous list. I love One Punch Man. It just, in my opinion, the story, especially the last year worth of story in My Hero Academia has been just incredible. So that brings me over to my number eight pick, which is Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, this series had a huge like heyday throughout 2021. Its you know rise of popularity has been immense with the incredibly popular uh, anime adaptation. And again, like I said, I don't usually watch anime adaptations of things that I read, but I love seeing people get into things because of an anime adaptation. You know, getting into something that I already enjoy because I love having more people to talk to about these things that I I, I like, right? But Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, does like everything right for a shonen manga, in my opinion. Uh, it has fantastic characters, again, both on the protagonist and antagonist side. It has great pacing, great action, great artwork. Everything about this series just knocks it out of the park as far as what I expect out of a shonen battle manga. And it also takes a lot of notes from previous series that I absolutely love, like Yu Yu Hakusho and Bleach, and mixes these things into this new concoction for the current generation of shonen manga enjoyers. Um, so it's, it's great. I, I absolutely love everything about like the characters because in this series, similar to My Hero Academia, they have such like broad and creative powers for each of these characters, rather than having them all be kind of similar and part of the same like class of character, I guess, um, where like there's power creep that causes some characters to go beyond others. I feel like it, it, it's a, a series that's really about the creativity of how these characters are able to use their abilities uh, when fighting against the antagonist and stuff like that. Um, so it's fantastic. It's got a great story. And again, I, I mentioned, I believe uh, the pacing is phenomenal, which um, if you're familiar with like me, you might know that pacing is a huge part for me as far as uh, denoting the quality of a series. 
my favorite manga of all time is Slam Dunk. And I've made one video particularly about Slam Dunk and the main point that I hinge on uh, as to why that series is so great is because of its pacing being so phenomenal. So pacing is an incredibly important part in any storytelling and especially in shonen action manga because that fast pace is something that you want. You want it to carry you through the pages quickly um, because of you know dynamic artwork and action sequences and stuff like that. So that brings me out to my number seven pick, which is the currently ongoing series by the creator of one of my favorite concluded manga of all time, and that's Kyu Hayashida's Die Dark. Now, Doro Hedoro is it's one of my favorite, like I said, it's one of my favorite concluded manga of all time, and I love that. I mean, I'm wearing a Doro Hedoro shirt right now. I didn't even realize it. Um, I love the series so much, and when I found out that she had a new title coming out uh, that was going to be available soon in English, I was so excited. Now, um, Seven Seas got the license for this one, so they're publishing it, and unfortunately, they decided to put it in these smaller sized volumes, which are smaller than the uh, typical release from Viz, unfortunately. Uh, which is the reason why I'm like repeating unfortunately about that is because her artwork is so detailed I'll throw something up here uh, to show you that um, Her artwork is so detailed that it really deserves to have the larger page trim size to really enjoy every detail in her work now Q Hayashida it has a very distinct voice in storytelling because she tells stories that are dark and not in like a gritty way, but usually in like a, I would say a grungy way. Like Dorohedoro, I believe literally translates to mud sludge or something like that. If I'm wrong, I'll throw the proper translation up here. But on top of having, you know, the these dark stories in the way that she portrays them, but also dark in the concepts and stuff, uh, she has such a great sense of humor about her and the juxtaposition of like the environments that these characters are in against the sense of humor um, usually by having like very kind of innocent characters and existing in these very dark environments um, and then those innocent characters kind of come out when they need to as being you know not so innocent, I guess, would be the way to put it without spoiling stuff. Um, that juxtaposition is just incredible, and it works so well. It's not going to be for everyone. I know not everyone's going to appreciate kind of the the um, randomness, as it seems, the chaotic. I think chaos is better than saying random, but the chaotic nature of her storytelling is not going to be for everyone, but it is 100% for me, and Die Dark fits every bit of the bill of what Doro Hedoro was giving me. And when you have a series that you love and your you know, favorite series ends and it leaves that void in your soul and then another series comes up directly thereafter it that perfectly fills that void, there's no better feeling. Next up, my number six pick is also from the creator of one of my all-time favorite concluded manga, and that is Dead Dead Demons Didi Didi Destruction from Ino Asano. Now, Ino Asano is responsible for so many different great series, uh, but one of my favorites of all time being Goodnight Poon Poon. Uh, Dead Dead Demons is his currently ongoing series, which is going to be concluding soon, according to him, um, which basically tells the tale of uh, an alien invasion happening in Japan. However, the story does not focus on the alien invasion so much as it focuses on the human interactions between the main characters, which are a group of girls in like high school, um, and just what they're doing in their everyday lives, and how much this you know invasion, this looming threat over Japan, has impacted their lives, or how much it has not impacted their lives. It's a really great, like for lack of a better term, it's a really great character study. Um, and Asano has never had any issue in creating uh, deep and dynamic characters for his series. And Dead Dead Demons is no different. It has a broad cast of characters that you find yourself loving at least one of them. Like I have a few that I really enjoy and that I love seeing what they have going on in the series. Um, if you haven't tried it out yet, it's not as like immediately dark and depressing as a lot of Asano's other work. This one's a little bit more uh, 
palpable for people who don't want something that makes them want to cry in a corner, I guess. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. Like if you if you don't want to have another Sola Nin or you don't want to have another uh, Goodnight Poon Poon on your hands, it does get pretty emotional. It does get pretty deep and dark at some points, but for the most part, uh, Dead Dead Demons is not nearly as dark as those other titles are. Um, it's fantastic. If you enjoy his artwork, you already know what to expect here. He has uh, very detailed uh, environments and backgrounds while having characters that are extremely recognizable. You can see from a mile away that these characters are his, especially the ones that are very like distinct looking. But Asano is fantastic. He's one of my favorite creators. Um, and he, in my opinion, has been knocking out of the park with Dead Dead Demons. I highly recommend it. Also, these are beautiful volumes, the ones that Viz has been releasing. I know it's just based on the Japanese release, but uh, the French flaps making these like extended images is really cool. So that brings us around to my number five pick, which is Vinland Saga. This is probably gonna be on anyone's list. It is one of the uh, most popular seinen titles for a reason. It's just a fantastic character piece of historical fiction. Um, the journey of Thorfinn throughout this series is just one that is almost unmatched. It, it's something that's, it, this series is just fantastic. It has everything that you would want from a seinen manga as far as uh, intense and gory action, but it also has amazing character work. Um, I know there's a, a huge fandom behind the series now because of the anime having been released in the second season is going to be coming out pretty soon. Maybe not pretty soon. I don't know. Whatever the case is, second season will come out in the future. The second season is going to go through what's probably the best arc of the series so far, uh, the, the Farmland Saga. And uh, I, I hope that people don't like get disappointed because it's not action oriented because that's literally like where all the best character development happens in this series. Um, if you're a fan of historical fiction, this is obviously, without a doubt, in my opinion, going to be one of the best historical fiction titles out there. Uh, even if you're interested or not, like, this is just an incredible manga. I know that in the past, I wasn't really that interested in historical fiction, like, it wasn't my thing. Um, so I was hesitant to pick up titles like this one and another one that's a little bit further down on my list. Uh, but once I dipped my toes in, I was like, okay, this, this is fantastic. In my opinion, like, this series... So far, I, this is maybe an unpopular opinion, but it's not quite as good as the creator's previous title, uh, Planets. Previous? I don't remember if it was the direct predecessor to this one. Either way. Um, but I do have bias towards Planets because it was one of the earlier manga that I read back in like 2004. Uh, so I do have memories, really, really nice memories of that series. Um, but in my opinion, this one's not quite as good as Planets, but we'll see what happens as it concludes, as it wraps up. If it does continue to be quite as like amazing as it is, it may top that in my book. My number four pick, getting close to the top here, uh, is Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. This is, uh, this is quite a series. Um, if you enjoy things that might be a bit disturbing, not so much horror, but like uh, psychological thriller and just kind of very emotionally thrilling type of series, then Blood on the Tracks might be for you, but it's definitely not for the faint of heart due to the subject matter that it has within. Um, if you're not familiar with the series, which uh, I'm gonna give a synopsis for this one because uh, I feel like I have to, um, basically summed up into a line or two, it follows the very unhealthy relationship and uh, between a mother and her child and the obsession that the mother has with her son and kind of how this leads towards the the son's psyche kind of uh, morphing and crumbling over time. It's an incredible character piece. Uh, the only negative about this series is that you can literally read a volume in like 15 minutes. Like, I, I don't think that I've read a single volume that took me more than about 20 minutes to read. Um, it's partially because there's so little dialogue, because a lot of the storytelling is told through the imagery and the emotions in the people's faces and eyes. But it is also because the pacing of the story is just phenomenal, that it has you constantly wanting to push through and turn the pages uh, and see what's going to happen next. Unfortunately, that means that, you know, within 15 minutes, I've already read the book and then I have to wait however many months to get the next copy, you know, the next volume of the series. 
but it is what it is. I, usually Oshimi's series last around like 10 volumes or so, so I'm wondering this might be wrapping up soonish and we'll see a conclusion pretty, pretty soon. We'll see what happens. I have no idea what I'm talking about here. Number three, this is the other historical fiction series on my list, and that is Golden Kamui. And this, I cannot stress enough pretty much how perfect of a manga that this series is. This series has everything. It is a historical fiction series, but it is rife with action, with drama, with comedy. It, it has food and cooking throughout it. It has so many like references to uh, historical culture and stuff that I otherwise would know nothing about if it wasn't giving to me in the pages of this manga. It has so many, like just a hugely diverse cast of intriguing and interestingly wonderful characters. There's nothing else like it on the stands as far as like how broad uh, it fits into like every single genre. There's not a single genre in here that it doesn't at least touch upon. Like there's literally psychological horror moments in here. There's romance moments in there. There's everything that you would want from a manga exists within Golden Kamui. Currently 24 volumes are out in the US and the creator has stated that it is entering into its final arc. So there's no telling how much longer it's gonna last uh, in Japan, but I'm excited to see how this story wraps up. Uh, the basic synopsis is that there is a treasure that these people are trying to find using maps that have been tattooed on the bodies of former prisoners. And there are several groups of people who are trying to track down all of those maps so that they can put the maps together and figure out exactly where said treasure is. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Just, I, like, pick it up, just just buy it, just read it, or watch it. I've, I've heard some pretty good things about the anime adaptation as well. Either way, if you have not read or watched Golden Kamui, I cannot recommend it enough to anyone that's literally a fan of any genre of any media. So that brings us around to my number two pick. And this is one that I'm so happy qualifies to be on the list now because it started getting regular releases again. And that is Real by Takehiko Inoue. Now I mentioned briefly in the video earlier that my favorite manga of all time is Slam Dunk. And this is from the same creator as that series. Of course, Inoue is also responsible for Vagabond, uh, which because it is on hiatus is not able to qualify for this list. But at the very least, I put Real on here because this is an incredible series. This is such an emotional series. Uh, every character having incredible stories behind them and the struggles that they go through are just so palpable throughout the pages. Inoue's artwork is, I, I don't even have to talk about how great his art is, but it shines through so wonderfully in this series displaying the emotion behind the eyes of every single character that he has. I cannot stress enough how great Real is, um, and I'm hoping that every single volume becomes back in print and available so that everyone can pick it up again, because the 15th volume just recently came out after like several years of delay between volume 14 and 15, because the series, well, this is volume one, but you get what I'm saying. Um, the series was on a really long hiatus, uh, and finally he came back to, to work on it, and he's stated, if I recall correctly, Inoue stated he wants to wrap up work on Real, and then once wrapping up work on Real, he's going to continue working on Vagabond, uh, but he doesn't want to be doing too much at once because he also likes to spend time with his family, which, you know, we want that for him. Um, I want that for him. I hope you want that for him as well. The series is incredible. It follows, uh, on the surface level, it's about wheelchair basketball. Uh, Inoue loves basketball. This is his third title about basketball, Slam Dunk and Buzzer Beater being the other two. Um, but it's not really about the wheelchair basketball. It's about the characters and the, the things that they're dealing with, uh, you know, how they've wound up into the situations that they have, the things that have happened to them throughout their lives and the struggles that they go through and how they try to emotionally pick themselves back up um, as well as physically retrain their bodies to be able to do things that they may think that they're never gonna be able to do again. It's an incredible series. It is just, I, I can't recommend it enough. Again, like pick it up. I, I love this series. Pick it up. I, I absolutely recommend it. I absolutely love this series. It, it is one of the finest pieces of manga literature that's published today with no doubt. And this brings me around to my number one pick, which is the same as my number one pick last year, and of course it is One Piece. I talked a while about One Piece in the previous video, but I've been reading the series since 2003. Uh, it was one of the first ongoing manga that I ever got into outside of the things that I was already familiar with from their anime releases like Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, or Yu-Gi-Oh! 
from the get-go, from the very beginning, I was enamored by this series because of its very intriguing, original, and funny cast of characters, and this hugely developed world that even from the beginning seemed so enormous. Um, but as the series has continued over the past 18 years, 19 years since I've been reading it, um, it has grown with me as much as I have grown with it. Uh, I apologize for using like the same basic line that I did in my previous video, but it's true. The series has expanded and grown not just in its cast and in its world, but in its maturity, just as I have. The types of stories that it's telling now are so different than the types of stories that were being told at the beginning of the series. I know a lot of people who've never read One Piece are turned off by one reason or another, either because they think the artwork is silly or because it's so long that it's hard to get into it. But at the end of the day, One Piece is a masterclass in storytelling for many different reasons. There's a reason why it has become one of the most popular titles of all time, and I'm not, you know, obviously jumping on the bandwagon with, with this thing. I'm telling you honestly from someone who's been reading this series for 18 years, from someone who's been reading manga for the majority of my life, who's read thousands of manga and thousands of comic books, that this is one of the finest pieces of graphic literature that exists out there. It has some of the most amazing depth of characters and of its world and of creativity behind everything in there. Everything that Oda does is just incredible. Um, and I cannot recommend this series enough. I know I've been saying that, but like, this is my top 10 list. Obviously, I'm gonna recommend all these titles. If you want to try it out and you don't wanna read 100 plus volumes worth of material, the easy thing to do would be to watch the like episode of East Blue anime, the episode of Alabasta anime, those things. Um, we'll give you the synopsis basically uh, of a lot of the early parts of the series. So you can run through that within a few hours instead of reading 30 something volumes. And then if you enjoy those things, you can start expanding. That's my biggest recommendation if you want to get into it, but don't want to spend so much time on it. So that was my top 10 list of 2021. And now that we're done looking at that, let's go ahead and look back and compare it to my previous year. So as I mentioned last year, I also had One Piece as number one. Now, number two was Berserk and that's kind of heavy because um, now in the past year since I made that video, unfortunately, the creator of the series passed. Um, and so that series gets a huge honorable mention for the rest of time on any list that I put because it is another one of the finest pieces of graphic literature that's ever been told. Uh, my number three was Beastars, and I had a lot of comments about Beastars being on that list because at the time I made the previous one, it was already concluded, but it's still coming out even now in the US, even though it's been concluded in Japan for a while. Um, so that, that was one of the reasons why I decided to pull the, uh, you know, pull anything off of the list that's already concluded in Japan, so as to not make any confusion there. But I still think Beastars is fantastic. It is an incredible series, amazing characters, perfect drama. I recommend it. I know like people are kind of hesitant towards it because of the anthropomorphic animals and stuff throughout as the characters, but I assure you, trust me, it is an incredible series. Number four is another that didn't qualify on the list this time, and that's Hunter x Hunter because of the fact that it's on hiatus, and I decided to eliminate all hiatus titles. Number five was Golden Kamui. So Golden Kamui jumped up by two spots, obviously because the previous two, actually previous three, were no longer on the list, but it really is that good. It Golden Kamui is one of the finest things out there right now. If you haven't read it, like you just owe it to yourself to experience something so good. Uh, My Hero Academia was number six and that fell down to eight. Now I did mention My Hero had a fantastic year in 2021, so you would think that would allow it to climb rather than fall, but it's just that the other titles that I added into the list are like that much better, I guess, or they're that good. Um, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is was number seven. In particular, Jojolian was number seven. And Jojolian ended, so obviously it's no longer gonna qualify, but also Jojolian was not available officially in English, so it wouldn't qualify for two reasons this time, even if it was still ongoing. 
Um, I did do a review of Joe Jolian uh, back when it ended in like September or whatever that was. So if you're interested in my thoughts on Joe Jolian and how it ended and stuff, you can go check out that video. Number eight was Vinland Saga. So Vinland Saga jumped up by a few places as well. Uh, it is a great series. The only negative about Vinland Saga is that like the English release is so slow since they are two in one volumes. We have to wait so long for a new volume to come out, um, which is unfortunate because then it makes me kind of forget how much I love it until the next volume comes out. Uh, number nine was To Your Eternity, and I still love this series, but anyone that's reading To Your Eternity knows the quality dropped off after the first like major arc, uh, after like volume 10, once it gets into the present day arc, it just doesn't hit those same emotional beats. Now I still have hope that the series is going to uh, come back around and continue being one of the best series you know, that's on the stands. Um, but until then, it's just not making it to my top 10 list. Uh, and then Comey Can't Communicate at number 10, same as it was this time. Like I said, I love the series. It's cute, it's wholesome. I think it's great. So that means new series to the list. This time, my number two pick, Real. Uh, this one because it is, you know, getting some semi-regular release now. Now it qualifies. Now I feel good about putting it on there. Uh, Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. Um, I think because I had only read like one or two volumes at the time that I made that previous list. So now that I've read more, I know how much I love it and it definitely deserves a place on there. Uh, Dead Dead Demons. I don't know why I didn't choose this one last time because I was already reading and loving it, um, but definitely deserves to be on there now. Uh, Die Dark, this one started up in English at the beginning of 2021, so that's why this one's on the list now. Um, and I am absolutely loving it, so it deserves a place. And then Jujutsu Kaisen, I just think that this series um, really raised in its profile over the past year. Like, it, it was really good before, but it went from really good to great. So it definitely deserved a spot in that top 10 for me. So that's cool. It's pretty interesting for me to see like the way things shifted on my list from last year. So all that said, that that's it. That's everything. I hope that this was entertaining. I hope, you know, maybe you took away some recommendations for series that you didn't read. Um, anything that I didn't have on this list, you can just pretend literally any series was number 11 as long as it qualifies. Um, so if you're wondering why something was not on the list, just pretend it was number 11 and that's why it didn't make it onto the top 10. But what was your top 10 ongoing manga for 2021? There's so many great titles out there, so many that I wasn't reading that maybe y'all were. What did you enjoy? You don't have to put out your whole top 10 or, or in any particular order, but what series were you enjoying more than anything in 2021? I'm really curious to hear uh, because that's going to give me some recommendations for new things that I should be reading that might affect the way that this list ends up in the next year, in 2022's uh, top 10 ongoing list. So let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to hear about it. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of all the awesome content that I put out every single week. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for, for sticking around and having fun with me. Either way, subscribed or not, thank you so much for spending time with me in this video, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.